morning, church. You know your different houses in different tamans. <laughs> Welcome to our service. Uh, it's so good that we are able to worship God together even though we are not gathered together. Uh, let's just commit this time to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this time that we can come together to worship you, to glorify your name, Lord. May your name be glorified and that you find delight in our worship unto you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's praise Him. Oh uh-huh. 
thank you, Lord.
victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle. To you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory.
When every knee bows before your name But we will not wait until it does Here and now shall your kingdom reign Because you deserve all the praise. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and welcome once again to our online service. Will you please turn to your Bibles this morning to Acts chapter 16, the last passage that we have left. From verses 16 to verse 40, that is the passage we're going to look at this morning, but I'm going to read first of all from verses 16 to 24. If you will follow me with your Bibles open. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. One day, as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a demon-possessed slave girl. She was a fortune teller who earned a lot of money for her masters. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly he left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is an uproar. Because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. Verse 22, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have made 
And as we worship you by turning to your words right now, Holy Spirit, we invite you that you will anoint this time. The words that will be shared will touch our body, our soul, and our spirit. And that you will do your own sovereign, miraculous work through your word that is being preached forth. And we trust you will do so because we ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. The title that I would like to use this morning to summarize this whole portion is From Lockdown to Freedom. From Lockdown to Freedom. I'm sure that many of us will be able to identify with this title. Having gone through the movement control order for a few months and then finally to have the freedom thereafter. What were the first few things that you did when we were given the liberty, especially those of us who are outdoor person. I'm sure some of you would immediately go to visit some places or some of you will catch up with your favourite nasi lemak and other dishes, wasn't it? It was a freedom that you were looking for. And this morning, we will see this truth from the spiritual perspective because many of us have our own lockdowns, our own prison, the prison of doubts, the prison of fears, the prison of addiction, and even the prison of negative thinking that many of us struggle with. Fears and others are sometimes the constant battle that we fight with. And we must know that Christ has come to set us free. So before we get to that, to understand how that we will be able to be freed from some of these things, let us look at the context of this passage. If you were to remember from my last sermon, Paul was rerouted to a place called Philippi as the Lord led him to a new continent to be able to spread the gospel as well as to plant churches. And it was in this city of Philippi in Macedonia that Paul was able to lead a business woman by the name of Lydia to believe in the Lord Jesus. Now today, we read from the passage that Paul and Silas encountered a strange experience with a slave girl, the Bible tells us, who was a fortune teller. You see, my brothers and sisters, fortune telling can either be fake or it is real through the empowerment of evil spirits. I think for us who are in the eastern side here, we are more familiar with fortune telling, with all kinds of uh, witchcraft and occultic practices. And so, fortune telling, it is true. Either it can be a fake one or it can be a real one and that is done through the empowerment of evil spirits. And as the Bible tells us in this case, that this case was the work of divination through the evil forces. So, the Bible tells us also that the slave girl was earning a great deal of money for her owners. See, in this very specific situation, the, the, this girl didn't do it by herself. She, she was owned. In those days, there was slavery and all that. And she was owned by owners who made use of her ability to tell fortune and as a result, to earn money for themselves. So, as we read on, the Bible passage also tells us that this girl was following Paul and Silas everywhere they were going as they were preaching the gospel. This slave girl was also following, not one day, but as the Word of God says, for a few days, and she would be shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Paul got annoyed. Paul got very annoyed and he turned. After a few days, he turned and he began to say 
to the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of here, her. And the Bible tells us the Spirit that was possessing her and making use of her to be able to tell fortune, the Bible tells us that that Spirit left her. Now, let me pause here and pose three questions for you to think about. Question number one, how do you cast out an evil spirit? Question number two, how did Paul know it was an evil spirit? Question number three, why was Paul annoyed when he was given free advertisement? Would you like to just pause here and think for a while? What would be your answers? Interesting. The Bible tells us, how do you cast out evil spirits? Look at the model that Paul used, so to speak. What did he say? He simply said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. That's right. That is how we do it. In every single situation where we have to deliver a person who may be oppressed or possessed by the evil spirit, that's how we do it. Not by any other formula or words, but simply as we can read from various instances in the Bible, two things. Number one, it is in the name of Jesus Christ. Because of what Jesus did at the cross, because of what Jesus has experienced through the resurrection, heaven and earth, as the Bible tells us, all the authority is within His hands. And that is why there is power in the name of Jesus. Now, of course, this cannot be simply used by any others who are non-believers. This is the authority that is vested only for those who have believed in Jesus Christ. So that means if you have believed in Jesus Christ and I who have believed in Jesus Christ, we have the authority to make use of the name of Jesus to be able to pray for people who may need to be set free. And then, of course, the Bible tells us it is a word of command. Notice that Paul did not try to bargain with the Spirit and say, will you please leave her or you please just that you will let go of her, but rather that Paul simply gave the word of command and he said, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. So this is something that you must remember, my brothers and sisters. In any instances at all that you need to use the power of the name of Jesus to set someone free, remember, it's in the name of Jesus and it is by the word of command that that is done. Now, the second question was, how did Paul know that it was an evil spirit? The girl was normal. The girl was not manifesting, so to speak. My brothers and sisters, there is what we call the spiritual gifts that God has given to us. As and when it is needed, the Holy Spirit will empower us with any one of those 12 spiritual gifts that you can find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And as you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, the second part, you will discover here that one of the spiritual gifts is to be able to distinguish between spirits. That's right, to be able to distinguish between spirits. And as I mentioned just now, this is one of the 12 spiritual gifts, or we call it the gift of the discernment of spirit. In other words, sometimes when we begin to do the work of God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us. Is this a spirit that is possessing this person who is acting in such a weird manner or is it merely just a psychiatric problem? You understand what I'm trying to say? And sometimes you stand into a premise and the Spirit of God will give you the ability to discern. Why, why is there such a strange feeling here? And the spirit of discernment will come upon you that in this place, formerly, 
there was a kind of a spiritual activity that have taken place and there are spiritual forces that are here that is causing that kind of atmosphere. So my brothers and sisters, I believe that Paul was able to identify that it was an evil spirit that was possessing her that was empowered by the Holy Spirit, this ability to discern. And as a result, Paul was able to rebuild that evil spirit. The third question, why was Paul annoyed when he was given free advertisement? I mean, that statement that this slave girl was saying was honourable. It was like telling people, listen, listen to this man who are telling you the way to be saved. Why do you think Paul was so annoyed? I, I, I thought for a while and, and I believe that there are a few reasons why Paul was annoyed. First reason, I believe, was because Paul did not want the people to have a wrong focus on them because the words that this slave girl was using was, these men are servants of the Most High God. You know, sometimes that when people begin to uh, listen it wrongly and uh, they will begin to put the focus upon the person, upon the man and forget about the real source of power that is God Himself. As I often say, sometimes we are so focused upon the healing that we forget to focus upon the healer. Sometimes we are so focused upon the giving that we forget who is the giver. I believe that one of the reasons could be that Paul didn't want the people to focus on them. Oh man, these are men and servants of the Most High God. And another reason that I believe that Paul didn't want that statement was because Paul didn't want the people to have the idea. It is another fortune teller coming to town. You see, I'm trying, I'm trying to say because this, this, this slave girl who is well known as a fortune teller and right now, probably, yeah, look, this, this is another fortune teller who is able to tell you about the future. I believe that Paul didn't want that, that they will come as another fortune teller to give spiritual directions to the people who are in that city of Philippi. And I also believe another reason is that Paul didn't want to give the idea that they were working in court with her. For what partnership, as the Bible say, has light got to do with darkness? Paul didn't want to have anything to do with the evil powers, even though it appears that this spirit is doing them a favour. You understand what I'm trying to say? And if you were to remember, even during Jesus' time, Jesus' ministry, that whenever He encountered evil spirit and when the evil spirit was able to identify Him as the Son of the living God and begin to declare out loud, you remember what did Jesus say? Jesus just tell them, shut up. Because Jesus knew that it was not time for them and He did not need them to be likened to be the advertisers for what Jesus is fully capable to do by Himself as the light of the world. So I believe that these are some of the reasons why Paul got woke up at that moment of time and I believe that by the empowerment of God that he drove out that evil spirit that was possessing this slave girl and thus enabling her to be able to fortune tell. Let's see what happened next? So the girl was set free from that spiritual bondage. And that means that she could not tell fortune anymore because the spirit had left her. And that is the reason why her owners get so annoyed because this slave girl could not help them to earn the income. That means their business is going to be affected their wealth is going to be affected. And they were so angry. These owners of the slave girl were so angry 
and they begin to cook up a story and they begin to stir up the mob, the people out there and say, hey, look at these Jews, look at these foreigners who have come uh, and tell us uh, to be able to, to have customs that are illegal for us uh, Romans to practice. That, that was a precise reason or excuse that these owners were, were stirring the crowd with. And sometimes not only but the crowd of those days, but even in the modern days. You know, sometimes people can easily be swayed by emotion and, and easily can join a crowd and they may not even know why they are there in that uh, chaos or that riot or whatever because sometimes people are so blinded and they just follow blindly. And so, the whole city was in uproar as the Bible tells us. And that was why that the mob beat up Paul and Silas and even without trial. For that day, they were immediately thrown into the prison cell. So, that stops at verse uh, 24. I'm going to ask you to turn to verse 25 right now and let us see what happened from verse 25 to verse 34. The Bible tells us around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations and all the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who live in his household. And even at the hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. What an amazing miracle, isn't it? What an astounding record that we can see. Acts chapter 16, verse 25, the Bible says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. You see, my brothers and sisters, midnights are the darkest of times. Think about midnights. What does it mean to you? Midnights are often lonely places for everything comes to a standstill. Midnights are the moments where you cannot see clearly. And sometimes you hear noises that you do not hear during the daytime. Midnights are the places where you feel stuck because everything is closed. Where you feel trapped. Midnights are sometimes very scary and it is the time where you feel lost and even without direction. Perhaps some of us are faced with the midnight of our soul even right now. And you who are there listening, perhaps you are going through the midnight of your life. But let me tell you what the scripture has to say to give us hope. The Bible in Psalm 30 and verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Weeping may endure through the night, uh, but joy will come in the morning. That you may be going through a tunnel, but there will be a light that is coming forth because the Lord is the Lord of lights Himself. So the Bible tells us, that at midnight, while they were in that prison cell, Paul and Silas were praying and they were singing hymns, worshipping God in prison. 
Now, my brothers and sisters, as you begin to look into this passage of Scripture, to pray is a very reasonable thing. Every one of us will pray when we are going through the midnight of our soul. Every one of us should be praying when we are faced with situations. But praise? Come on! <laughs> Why praise? I mean, it's not easy to praise. Why? Why do you think? Why do you think that they praise? What are the implications here? How does it help to gain freedom? Let me just show you some truth here. I believe that they praise God because they embrace their difficulties as part of their call of life. They praise God because they embrace their difficulties as part of life, as part of their call. For Philippians chapter 1 verse 29 tells us, For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for Him. When you begin to read this scripture, you will begin to understand what kind of paradigm do they have concerning their life, concerning the way that they live. The kind of privilege they have learned to embrace that difficulties even being put into prison cell as part and parcel of their calling, as part and parcel of their life. Now, of course, for us as believers, we have to also understand that in certain ways that this is also applicable to us because sometimes uh, the people may have a wrong inclination that the Christian life should be a problem-free life, should be an easy life uh, where there will be no circumstances that should bother us. And I would term that as fair-weather Christians. That we do not know how to face up with situations and our expectations is totally wrong. My brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that the Christian road is a narrow road. It is explicitly been mentioned to us. It is a road of molding. It is a road of refining. It is not just a road where God will hear us and keep us to have a comfortable life, an easy life. But God's purposes in saving us is to mold us, is to refine us, is to prepare us for heaven in the days to come. What is your expectation? What is your mindset? Because the easier that you will adapt to the understanding of what the Scripture is telling us that will free us from the wrong expectations and ideals that sometimes are the very basics of our struggles of our Christian life. Secondly, I believe that they praise God because praise is an alternative to complaining. Praise is an alternative to complaining. Acts chapter 16 verse 25 tells us that Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Now, let me ask a question again. Why were the other prisoners listening to them? Why were the other prisoners listening to them? Because sometimes life is like that. That others who are not believers will like to see how we as believers will respond, will react when we are under pressure, when we are going through our circumstances and when we are going through the, through the crisis. They will look at us. They will look at us to see how we would be able to, to, to cope with those situations. And I believe that another reason why that the prisoners were listening to them as well, uh, while they were praying and praising God because these are uncommon things. What do people usually do? For anyone who would be in prison, I believe that there will be whining, there will be doubting, there will be fret fretting, there will be complaining, there will be worrying instead of singing and worshipping. My brothers and sisters, praise, worship, prayer, and the Word of God are the tools that we as believers can use and that others do not have 
when one is confronted with difficulties. Have you ever thought of that? This is very important. These are the tools, that these are the blessings that we have as believers that others who have yet to believe do not have. All that they have is complaints, worries, all of those doubts. But God has given us praise, prayer. And I believe that's why even as we read books like Cory Ten Boom, how they were in prison during those days under the Nazi rule, these Jews who survived the Holocaust, how did they survive? It's the Word of God that sustained them. It is the prayer that sustained them, my brothers and sisters. The freedom that we can enjoy is when we learn how to utilize these, these tools, I call it, these, these assets, spiritual assets that the Holy Spirit has given to us to pray, to praise, to have the Word of God in us. Number three, praise is a spiritual weapon. I believe that all of us should know by now that praise is, is not just a time filler, that you come to church, that there's a time of worship. It's not just a time filler, but praise, whether it be at your home or whether it be in the church or wherever you are, changes the environment, invites the throne, it, it rather builds the throne of God, that God may dwell in the midst of the praises of His people. Two scriptures that I can read to you. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. The Bible tells us, As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. My brothers and sisters. What happened? As they began to sing and praise, God caused confusion to come upon the camp that even the armies of Judah did not need to fight because they were fighting among themselves. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 23, the Bible tells us, And so it was, whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him, the Bible tells us. See what praise and worship can do. Right? Whether it be at your home, switch on songs of praise and worship. That when you're going through stressful moments, begin to have those songs that will come into your mind or you can switch on those uh, that you have. Yes. And I believe that God will do a special work and as I have personally even experienced, even when we go and pray for places, we, we build up the praise and worship before we pray. Why? Because worship enthroned the presence of God. And that is also the reason why I encourage people who have relatives in the ICU and while they're in a coma, if it is permissible, bring a small player and, and switch on that, that praise and worship song that they'll be able to listen and even though they may be in coma state that those songs of worship will be able to bring forth the Zoe life to be upon that patient. My brothers and sisters, praise is a spiritual weapon and then finally, number four, they praise God because they trusted Him. They praise God because they trusted Him. You know, it takes deep trust for them to do what they did you think it is so easy for you to praise when especially you are undergoing through crisis? That would be the least or the last thing that we will do. Isn't it right? Because you don't feel like praising. You don't feel like praying. You don't feel like reading the Bible. But when somebody is able to praise God even though he was locked up in prison, that means that the person have a deep, deep trust towards the Lord who is there. You see, they could have doubted. Paul and Silas could have doubted. They could have easily complained. If you were to remember, it was God who sent them there. Their purpose was to go up to places like Bithynia and Asia Minor. You still remember? We read from Acts chapter, uh, chapter 16 from verse 1 to 15 
uh, the previous week and we dealt with it. How, how the Holy Spirit closed every door and, and God redirected them and to come to Macedonia through a vision. And can you imagine right now that they will be complaining, God, you closed the doors to where we wanted to go and you redirected us here only to allow us to go through suffering and right now imprisonment. Come on. My brothers and sisters, the prayer and praise shows us something. And what does it show here? It shows us that even though they could not understand, but I believe that they just trusted and float along with the Holy Spirit, knowing that their life, knowing that all that they're doing is in the hands of Abba Father. They trusted. And of course, we know the reason why for this imprisonment as we begin to read the Bible because for one particular reason, then that is that the jailer and the entire household will have an encounter of their life. And as a result, they were all saved. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that God sometimes will permit you to go through all of these things, as I said, that went into a physical jail so that they can rescue another who is in a spiritual jail, my brothers and sisters. Uh, there is a purpose, there is a divine purpose that you and I may not be able to fully comprehend. As you begin to read the Bible, the Bible tells us as they were beginning to pray and praise as there was an earthquake and immediately the, the prison doors were flung open and, and all the chains fell off from every single of the prison. Not only Paul and Silas for information, but all the other prisoners experienced the same. And the Bible tells us that as the jailer woke up and saw that mind, the, the prison doors are open and sure that this, this, all these prisoners have fled, immediately he wanted to take his own life because he knew very well that he will be held accountable and responsible. And that was the reason why he thought of committing suicide. But look what happened. That Paul and Silas remain where they are for whatever reason. For whatever reason, why they did not immediately fled, I believe that one of the possible reasons was because Paul and Silas knew their identity as Roman citizens, as you can read from the following verses, that they knew their right, that they should not imprison in that manner. And that was why when the magistrates uh, was asking them to say, oh, that you may leave. And Paul was arguing, why should we leave? They should come here and apologize and escort us out. And I believe that one of the reasons why Paul and Silas remained in the prison was they know the right. And secondly, of course, I believe that the Holy Spirit may have even ministered to their hearts to say, wait, wait for a while. And the Bible tells us that when the jailer heard Paul saying, don't harm yourself, wait, we are all here. The jailer came trembling before Paul and one of the first words that he said was, what must I do to be saved? Isn't it remarkable? Isn't it remarkable that the jailer did not say, how come you did not escape? Or other, whatever, other kind of uh, questions that the jailer could have asked, but this specific spiritual question, what must I do to be saved? It is a Zoe moment that God has arranged with the jailer that he saw what he saw was a divine miracle that it was not something that happened every day but it was a divine encounter that led him to understand that there's something powerful about this man in Paul and Silas and there's something that he needs from them the freedom from the, from the bondages of his own life of fear, of bondages. Right now, he see a light. And the Bible tells us that Paul and Silas not only led him, but led his entire household. My brothers and sisters, God is not only interested in you, but God wants you and your household to be saved. Hallelujah. That we pray that through you, that if other families are not saved, God will save you and your entire household. Pray for them and believe in them. The Bible tells us they were all baptized. They were all baptized. My, my, my brothers and sisters, that, that is something so phenomenal that it is worth it 
to go through that experience. My brothers and sisters, let me conclude by asking this question. What are your lockdowns? What may have or are still imprisoning you right now? Could it be the fears? Could it be the doubts? Could it be your apprehension of what will come tomorrow? What is your life all about? May I urge you, my brothers and sisters, that you consider carefully again the whole context of this message that you can be freed, that you and I can be freed from some of those things that have been imprisoned us if that we will change our expectations and understanding about the Christian life that you will not struggle over every single bit of situation as if that it is strange but rather that you and I may know that God has called us to a life of being refined or being molded and sometimes even sufferings in some of those areas like persecution and all that that the faster that we get adapted to this kind of the spiritual mind that you will be liberated from the bondages that hold you concerning your own concept of life and I believe that another avenue for our freedom is to use the tools that God has given to us use the tool of prayer use the tool of praise use the tool of the word that has been given to us use the tool of, of worship unto Him don't use the common things of doubting of worrying of fretting and all those lay it aside and make use of these uncommon tools praise and worship changes things praise and worship enthrones God and of course finally let's trust Him and trust Him enough hallelujah that even though you may go through all these trials and as the Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Hallelujah. And God will lead us to triumph. And God will lead us to victory. Hallelujah. And even this morning, whatever that may be imprisoning your mind, your heart, your soul, your spirit, I pray the Spirit of God through the Word will liberate us to help us to see that the prison cannot lock you for Christ has set us free. Amen. Let us pray together even right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Karabaka shuka tarabaka shaka rabaka yanda labai. Hurabaka shaka raba shaka raba raba yanda labaka yandai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are your prison cells? What are those things that are locking you in? God has come to set us free. And this morning, even as you close your eyes and begin to talk to God for a few moments, tell God, first of all, what are some of those things that have entrapped you? Tell it to Abba Father right now. It could be doubts. It could be worries. It could be fears. Whatever it may be, Jesus has come to set us free. And when the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Father, even as your people begin to pray right now, oh Lord, I ask of you, even as I join them in this prayer, that by the power of the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you will begin to demolish every stronghold that have imprisoned us, O oh God, in our mind, in our soul, in our spirit in particular, that by the authority of the name of Jesus, I command that all of these prison cells that we have been locked in uh, be broken right now to the 
power of Jesus' name That every spirit of depression will go in the name of Jesus That every spirit of infirmity will be healed by the power of the name of Jesus, O God You liberate our mindset, O God You will liberate us with your truth, O God So that we will live by your truth So that we will trust you And trust you enough as Abba Father, O God That no matter what we are going through Your words say And God will work all things together for the good Of those who are called according to your divine purpose So in the name of Jesus I pray for the healing right now The healing of the mind The healing of the soul The healing of the body The healing of the spirit right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you have been having a very sensitive nose, uh, a kind of a sinus problem, and sometimes even wearing the mask will work you up, I want that you will just receive your healing right now, that by the power of Jesus' name, Lord, that I call upon the spirit of healing to come, Lord, the gift of healing to flow in the name of Jesus, that the no sensitivity, the sinus problem, and even the asthmatic situation be removed that you bring healing, the strengthening of the lungs, O oh God, and all the entire, Lord, sinus area. That by the power of Jesus' name, be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And if you are watching this morning, and you have a new friend, and you are saying, I need this Jesus to give me the liberty. I need this freedom the freedom of my mind, to have the peace in my mind, the peace in my heart. I want you to know that Jesus loves you and you can receive this gift of peace, of forgiveness by just following me in a simple prayer that I'm going to lead you to pray. For the Bible tells us, with our mouth we confess and with our heart we believe. You are safe, safe from all the negative things. Today, just close your eyes right now and follow me in this simple prayer. If you want this peace, this Jesus to come into your life right now, follow me. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love. I want to receive you to be my Lord and Savior. I confess all my sins. I ask that you forgive me. Wash me by your precious blood. Give me the peace. Give me the eternal life. And grant me the hope that is found in your name. Thank you, Jesus. I pray all of this humbly through Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations if you have prayed that prayer for the first time. Can I encourage you? Tell that Christian brother who had invited you to watch online. Say, hey, I prayed that prayer with your pastor just now. What must I do? And they will teach you what you must do. My brothers and sisters, join us to worship God even right now as I call the worship team to declare that God has given us the victory. Shall we worship the Lord together? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise God. We praise God. Hallelujah.
name of Jesus. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant.
We sing it in our hearts once more. We're gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes, oh God. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Let's declare one more time. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. Thank you, Jesus, for the liberty. Thank you, Jesus, for the freedom that you have given to us. Now I know I'm free, O oh God, and I shall live with the freedom and the liberty that you have given to us. And right now, even as we learn to worship you by our giving, through our tithes, our pledges, by our offerings, in all of the thanksgiving, Lord, that you will bless this offering and use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. Through Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. Amen and amen. Even as we worship the Lord by our giving, all the details are given to you right now. Touch and go. Boost. Bank transfer. Giving unto the Lord is our worship into the presence of the Almighty God. That even as you are giving, I'm glad to once again announce that we are reopening for physical worship here in Taman Billion Premise starting from the 1st of August. Saturday service will be from 5 p.m. 5 to approximately about 6.15 p.m. And then on Sunday, the Sunday service will be only at 11.30 a.m. Alright? Chinese service will be from 9 to 10.15 Sunday, the English service will be from 11.30 to 12.45 p.m. At the end of this, we will be giving you some specific announcement about the details of who can come and what you need to do to register yourself that you'll be able to join us for physical worship from the 1st to the 2nd of August. And I look forward to seeing all of you again. And even though those of you who may not be able to come, don't be dismayed because we will still have online service, particularly for those who may not be able to come because of age. So, God bless you that even right now, receive this benediction. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to our God. Hallelujah. Glory to our God. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and your families and give you peace. From now and even forevermore, and God's people together say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. May you have a wonderful week ahead of you. Amen. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. We are glad to announce that Carries is reopening our doors to physical church service this 1st August 2020. We are expecting and looking forward to welcome all of you home to Carries Christian Centre and the information on the service timings are available on our church website. And due to the SOP set by the Ministry of Health, here are some important guidelines for us to take note of. For physical church service attendance, pre-registration of seats are required. And for ages 12 and above, and those of you who are below 70 years old, you are welcome to attend our physical services. And for those who are unable to join us physically, 
our online service through YouTube and church website will be on Sunday 9am and 11.30am. Let us guide you through the pre-registration of seats to attend the services. Some other guidelines will be Please wear your mask while on site Follow the leading of our friendly ushers as they take your temperature Show the usher your e-ticket on your mobile phones prior to entry Join our online services next week Pastor Carmen Hill will be ministering to us with the Word of God